Plasencia Cigars. Perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Stogie Geeks, welcome to episode 319, volume 2. I am your host, Joe Zeppa, joined by the little brown-haired kid from Texas, Drew, who's joining us remote. Today, we get to review the stick of the week is the Placencia Reserva Original. The size we are going is the 4 and 3 fourths by 52. If you want to learn more about Placencia and find a retailer near you, go to stogiegeeks.com, click on the Placencia banner, throw in your zip code, and away you go. Seek them out. Anyway, Drew, the Placencia yes. Reserva Original. What do you think? 1898. So, this cigar, this factory and blender is out of Placencia Cigars, as we know. Wrappers, Nicaragua. Uh, binder, Honduras. And filler, Nicaragua. Mm. Uh, but Nicaraguan, and our words, you know, of course, the origin is in Nicaragua. So here we are. Yeah, beautiful cigar. Uh, that's what we've been smoking all week. Uh, I don't have one in my hand now because I have the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm in the house. So my wife is watching, and I'm pretty sure she's like, hey, I don't see any smoke. He's good. Anyhow, uh, yeah, uh, so very, very nice cigar. Uh, the, uh, the notes, uh, they're hitting definitely as, as, as stated, and, and for me, uh, you know, more of the, uh, the, 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 the dried fruit, man, that really comes through with this cigar, um, throughout the cigar mm. from start to finish. So for me, it's just really nice on the retro hell. You definitely get the subtle notes of pepper. Uh, but yeah, definitely one of the cigars, one of the best cigars, uh, that I've had, uh, that I'm now making a box purchase and I'm giving away my rating now. Box worthy. Hey, hey, you jumped right to it. You know, no anticipation. Drew's like, box worthy, move on. Oh, get one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, just to elaborate a little bit more, it's available in seven different sizes. It, it is. The Placencia Reserva or, or, Original is avail available in a Churchill Corona Cortez Nestico Pyramid Robusto and Original Toro, which we just learned on the first half of episode 319 when Drew and I had the chance to interview Nesta Placencia. And if you're just tuning in live, you're a little late, um, which we just learned that it, the size was based uh, and originated from the Toro size. Yes. And, yes, he did. And yeah, he I, did. I, 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 last week I expected the answers to be different ones, different sizes. Cause when I, and, and, I, and I'm only going from historically speaking, to uh, different rollers or owners of whoever we have the chance to interview here on Stogie Geeks, um, they always throw out a different size of what one one originated and then build around. So it's kind of interesting approach on how it speaks to his consistency as you elaborated. So, oh yeah, you know what I noticed about every percent I've smoked, it will go to the nub. It will. <laughs> I did yep. the, right? It will absolutely positively go go to the nub, and it doesn't get harsh. That that cigarette that that cigar pick that I was telling you about that I got over the holidays, man, that comes in handy now. I, I'm I'm addicted to it. It uh, I don't know how I went on not smoking cigars all the way down to the nub without this. Oh, your device. cigar roach clip thing we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't have alligator teeth. It's like a little <laughs> needle. It's just, Pierce through the cigar. Where did you get uh, this? I know we were talking about with gifts. Did someone gift this to you? Or? Yeah, yeah. Somebody sent it to me. One of our listeners sent it to me. So as a gift, and it has like a nice little. I got to. I got to get it out of my pack. Really? It has a nice. Yeah, it's got a nice little. Uh, how do you call that? Uh, that. Um, that yeah, uh, kind of an Indian jewel. I forget what it's called. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of a. It's got the. Uh, it's kind of a. Jesus, what is that color? Real light blue and white. I, I forgot the name of it. Can you take yeah. a picture of it, post it on uh, there, I or I'll, I'll bring it next episode? Yeah, I will. I will. Bring and it's it pretty cool. Because it's got, it's got little grippy nubs on it uh, as the stones. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. No kidding. I might, I, I, you're, you're – because there are a lot of cigars, like, you know, especially the ones that I give higher ratings to. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you go down to the nub, and I've noticed that, and it's consistently going down to the nub. And uh, – you know, uh, 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 if if you're 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 endorsing this product, right? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm 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 interested. And you had a listener send you that. 
Why do I yeah. get all the hate email? I get all I, the, I get all the email and I tell people send all your hate email to Drew at so and, I get and, all the good email. <laughs> you get, I get <laughs> I, I get I get packages. I get I get hey, I want to send you this. Uh give me your address. And I'm like leery about it. Even my wife's like, well, maybe we should give him a P.O. box. I'm like, well, we'll see what happens. So I just give him my address and sure enough, things arrive. Yeah. So, I have Pretty a cool. pillbox. What the heck for my business? What was the matter? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. No, I, 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 we do get some, some, some cool gifts uh, usually here at Stogie Geeks, uh, but never a, 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 a cigar poker thing. I got a new thing from Paul. <laughs> this, oh. this thing um, here, right? Let me. Uh, I can't put my cigar down. It's a nub, right? So. So it's this is the size of it, right? It's like a tool that you use to bang the nail back in the cigar, a box, right? So the, from the oh, cigar okay. box, you have the nail, and it's also got a prior. You can't really see it here on, on the on the um, the the camera because of the 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 distance I'm at. But it's got a thing, so like it's like the the reverse end of a of of a of a hammer, right? So I can go get yeah. the nail and then do that. Okay. And Paul goes, you know, you, you he he had a couple sent to him, and and I was he was like, you know, you want this tool? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll stick it in my bag. And I literally looked at Paul and say, is that a problem? Like with the, with the nail? Because like, <laughs> if I get a box, I like rip it open like caveman style, pass out cigars, and, and right. do that there. But um, you know, I, now I'm gonna have to f buy a box that I, I can use it. You know what I mean, but it's right. it's cool. It's it's metal. It's it's a super cool tool. So I put it in my give it little. To, I was gonna say, give it to Caden. I'm pretty sure he'll 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 figure it out. Nah, what to do with it. I'm like, not giving like... him anything that it, it, <laughs> you know. He he has a drum set and and oh, that, okay. you know which my mom says. Why did you get him a drum set? I'm like he likes to play drums while while I play guitar. Right, I play yeah. my acoustic guitar. You know, nice. in the living room works great when Mama Bear's working and. TV's off and I'm strumming through the guitar and he's banging on a thing. My mom's like, yeah. "That doesn't annoy you?" I'm like, "No." Like he can drum all he wants. He's drumming. He's drum. He goes to bed at eight o'clock at night. It's not like he drums at midnight yet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yeah. So um, anyway, nice. uh, I'm, I, I won't be giving him the the hammer. I'm gonna keep it in my cigar toolkit uh, right. leather folio that I have uh, with my cigars ready to. To smoke, but uh, anyway, getting back to the Placencia Re Re Reserva Original. Um, this cigar is in regular production. Um, uh, again, a, a very strong char characteristic is the smoke in the palate that you get. It lingers on your palate. I get a nuttiness. I do get that classic Nicaraguan um, flavor. The retro hail is mm. awesome. Like it if is. you if you retrohale this cigar, super awesome. You will pick up a little bit more of the nuttiness, a little bit more of the earthiness. Doesn't really have one of the things I've noticed about um, the Placencia line that we've uh, smoked through so far is it doesn't have like a leathery component that most Nicaraguans um, tend that come it's, show up on my palate. It's got a, it's very subtle, very yes. subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's good. Um, you can, you, you know, if, if I would elaborate a little bit further, just to give it a roundup before I give my rating, Drew already spilled his rating, but, um, I, I would, I, I would say you, you could see some, some of the citrus notes trying to come out, but they don't come out, um, there. I think it's a little bit overwhelmed by the pepper, uh, component, but they're very, very subtle, but also, um, Within the retro hail, uh, that classic Nicaraguan pepper really comes out for sure, and 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 it lingers on your palate. Like this is a, a, a super cool cigar as well. So, quick question, Joe. So, on the pepper side of it, like for me, I'm getting kind of a mixture of the pepper. So, I'm not sure if it's just my palate at that at that time, but but in the in the last uh, five of these I've smoked, I mean, for me, it's always been like a kind of a mixture between a, a white and a little bit of a I want to see like a green pepper. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's no question. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. So yeah. I wasn't. Sh yeah. So that was kind of teetering a little bit. Like some of the cigars, like if you go into a real heavy body cigar, you'll you'll get that red pepper, that real deep black pepper. Yes. Out of it, but this is more on the lighter side of. I mean, but it's there. I mean, it's definitely there. It's just not 
overwhelming the the cigar and therefore like you said the the moon the mumami of the of that smoke lingering on the tongue on the palate it's just it's really really delightful yep it's not as thick as the cosecha that we had the 146 right yep. or the elma del campo but it's there more than the elma del fuego uh that that we've had that 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 kind of placentia characteristic of the smoke in of which, in the beginning of this episode, Nessa said I was not full of crap when I said that. <laughs> and that and he actually, uh, there was a process that he uses to get that umami flavor there. So if you're just tuning in and you missed it, you might want to hit rewind in there. Or if you missed it, you might want to hit rewind again if you listen to this on traditional podcast and the time yeah. that, that fits you. Um, rating, I would do with this cigar... Because some of my friends are not, um, might not like the uh, denseness of the smoke. I know that sounds crazy, but mm-hmm. I do have some crazy friends who um, smoke cigars, and sometimes they only smoke cigars when they're with me. And I have other friends that smoke cigars as much as me or more uh, there. Um, because of the other lines uh, that they have to offer, and I would do a Story Geeks rating, I would do box split with a friend. And the mm-hmm. reason being is um, because I like what I've had um, tried previously with their line, just a scotch more. But the smoke is, is, is super good. I can, If I wasn't comparing it like that, it could easily be a box, no question. But it's definitely nice. a box that you could share with friends and enjoy. Well guess, well, guess what? I bought a box, so you could send me 100 bucks, and I'll send you half the sticks. Oh! Oh, we should do it. Look. Actually, if we do it that way, if we oh, do yeah. it that way, you would get your sticks earlier, right? Yeah. Because Gustavo emailed me and said, don't forget Drew's sticks. And that was two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> we should do it that way, Drew. Because <laughs> this way, because you, you being in Texas, you can get a little bit more stuff a little readily available. I got to go on wild goose chases, right, to find stuff, right, right. there. Um, next door, just got Espinosa. Right. So uh-huh. I was like, oh, wow. Like, you know, really? Like, welcome to the party four years later. Right. But, you know, um, you know, and they're like, oh, wow, they're selling. I'm like, wow, genius. You know, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it's it's like, I don't know. It's it's uh, we should do it that way. So I'll I'll uh, I'll send you a hundred bucks and we'll go forth from there. I like it. Mm. They'll be there before you know it, so expect them by uh, next Wednesday. There you go. <laughs> then, <laughs> in other words, Joe, put that hundred bucks in the mail, <laughs> and, and 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 you won't get one of those fake FedEx uh, package uh, notices on your uh, messenger that says that Jose or whoever sent you a package and you need to confirm it. It'll just be there. <laughs> nice. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. Perfect. Sweet. So yeah. Thanks. So uh, Drew. Officially gives the Placencia uh, a, a, a Reserva Original. He gives that a box, and I give it box split with a friend. And knowing true and true, we are going to split that with friends. So there you go. Right. Awesome. Super cool. Uh, Drew, what else have you been smoking? So the other cigar I had, as I alluded to, over to, uh, uh, well, I'll just, uh, we'll start with uh, Espinosa Habano number four. Uh, five by fifty-two. This is more of a full to uh, medium to full body cigar. Uh, the number four is made at the Lazona uh, factory uh, in Nicaragua, uh, along with the rest of the line. Uh, so this one, the wrapper is a Mexican uh, Mexican Capa Negra, uh, the uh, binder Nica, and the filler Nica. So you know, uh, very nice uh, construction on this cigar. Smokes very nicely. There's no uh, burn issues with it, no run. Uh, you know, I, I, I got a chance to meet Eric Espinosa late last year, and uh, he gave me a few sticks, uh, shared a few sticks with me. I shouldn't say gave. He, well, he did give them to me, but he, few, he shared a few sticks with me. And so this was, one, uh, this was one of the bunch that I got from him. And I'll tell you, uh, taste notes on this was definitely like a nutmeg, uh, apple, uh, Kind of a dry apple, a little sweet, uh, but not over, not overly. Uh, a little bit of cinnamon, uh, brown sugar. Uh, you definitely get notes of pepper mixed in there on the second, uh, in the second half of the cigar, second third, and then from there you start to get into that little, little bit of leather component, not too overbearing again, and then it just the brown sugar and the uh, uh, cinnamon uh, and nutmeg just working its ways through. It's very, very nice cigar. 
Um, I gave this one here a uh, uh, a fiver. Um, I would say for those of you who don't have a sweet palate or like that really sweetness, uh, definitely try it and then go into a fiver from there. But this is definitely a cigar that I know that you'll enjoy. Uh, like I said, medium full and definitely, you know, all Nika uh, for sure. Awesome. Awesome. And you gave it a fiver. I gave it a fiver. Yes. Okay, cool. Anything you didn't like about it? No, I mean, it was it was definitely, like I said, it, 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 there was nothing about it that was, like, I didn't have to relight it. Uh, it was effortless. Uh, it burns nicely. Uh, Espinosa, again, does does a great job, uh, you know, at its factory with these cigars. And like I said, I've, I, I've yet to run into a, a cigar uh, that I've had any issues with. Uh, one of my other favorites, just 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 kind of a side, uh, side note, is the uh, La Bamba 601, or, yeah, La Bamba yeah. 601. Oh man, <laughs> mm. about a full full buy cigar and just ha- and just enjoying this at the end of the day, uh, man, it really puts you in a relaxed state. Uh, you know the the Nick uh, the La Hero nicotine in there is just really phenomenal. And again, it's just you know like I said, but uh, no no issues with this cigar. No, uh, I didn't have anything. Like I said, I, I got him from Eric directly when he was here, and so yeah, I, perfect cigar. Awesome. Awesome. I had an EP Carrillo Edition Limitada 2013. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Super cool stick, uh, for sure. Uh, this was a limited release. They made 30,000 cigars, 1,500 boxes of 20. Obviously, it's Edition 2013. Came out in 2013. Rapper is um, uh, San Andreas Mexican. Your binder is Nicaraguan and Brazilian. Your filler is Nicaraguan. Uh, it's available in one size. It's called the Toro. It's a 6 and 1 8 by 54. Um, these are somewhat limited. Uh, EP Carrillo comes up with an Edition Limitada year um, there. So um, it's, it's kind of like a, a, kind of like a, a mini exclusive run that uh, he's done. Uh, throughout the years, he's done one in 2010. Obviously, it was called the P. Carrillo Edition uh, Limitada 2010. There was one in 11, 12, and I believe there was one in 15 uh, as well. So, you know, something to seek out uh, there if you're looking for a gift uh, for someone. It's they're they're limited uh, there. Um, uh, when we had uh, Ernesto on. Stoyi Geeks, I don't have the episode, but if you go to StoyiGeeks.com and type in uh, E.P. Carrillo or Ernesto Perez Carrillo or Ernesto, it should come up in the search function. Uh, he had mentioned uh, these sticks that uh, kind of some of his personal favorites and whatnot. It's not like a cabinet for him or anything like that. It's just a, it's just a, a, a release that he gets out. So uh, if you're a fan of E.P. Carrillo, and I am uh, for sure, um, you know, um, and as we know, Paul is a big fan of E.P. Carrillo. Uh, there, um, definitely, you should seek these sticks out. I don't like sending story geeks on a wild goose chase, but the burn's excellent. Um, it is medium to full. It's going to be consistent. Uh, it will be one of those sticks that you need Drew's uh, poker for. I'm getting to that phase mm-hmm. uh, there. I don't think I'm going to make another stick by the time we finish this one. Um, but yeah, it's a super good uh, stick. If you were to find a box in a retailer, the the Edition Limitada something or other, being the year, um, they run about fifteen dollars a stick, scotch higher than than there. But uh, definitely try to seek them out if they if there are some lingering on a shelf near you. Um, definitely uh, scoop them up, and you won't be disappointed. Uh, I gave them a box split. Just because, which is a high rating for something that's so limited uh, there. Because I don't like, you know, saying this is what I have and you don't have. You know what I mean? T- type mm-hmm. thing to the listeners. But, yeah, if you uh, if you have a retailer near you um, that uh, has a lot of EP Carrillo stuff, ask them about it. They might have some in the back room. Uh, you never know. When it, uh, That's one of the benefits of going when you shop local and go to your brick and mortar uh, store. It's amazing when you sit down and you smoke a cigar and you order a drink or if it's just 
hang out and they don't have a liquor license, you sit down, you start talking to the owner or a shop owner or a humidor manager or reg or a regular employee. Ask them, hey, you know, you guys have a lot of EP Carrillo. Do you have any additional limitadas or, uh, hanging around in the back? And they might surprise you and say yes. And if they do, I suggest that you go forward and pick them up. All right. There you go. Sweet. So, <clears throat> Uh, I haven't had the chance to have that one, but I'm going to have to go on a chase on that one. Do you have any, I mean, I'm sure you're in Texas. You have some big, uh, EP Creole. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah I just, I just got to go in there and grab it. So, yep. so, so my next cigar, I, I, I'd like to talk about is the Asylum 13. It's one of my favorite cigars, you know, throughout, I mean, it's, it's becoming a classic facing at this point, uh, for me. So I, 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 I love, I love the cigar. Uh, it's one that I do go back and I do buy couple boxes uh when it when i have the uh when i'm getting running low uh so this is a sign 13 cigar it's true nicaraguan puro uh a dark uh nicaraguan albano wrapper cloaks a feisty combination of aged cuban seed long filler growth uh throughout the throughout the uh uh throughout the back uh uh the black uh so this 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 excuse me <laughs> this a uh this particular uh, uh, crop is grown in volcanic soils of Nicaragua. So uh, that's, I mean, when, when you get that earthy, the cocoa, the, uh, the, the, the coffee and the tobacco, the, just the tobacco uh, aromas going, oh, man, it's just, it's just one nice treat um, to go into. So um, I, I smoke this on a regular rotation at least twice a week. Um, the baking spices come through on a retro uh, the, a little bit of the pepper uh, definitely comes through. The taste at the beginning, the chocolate, the sweet chocolate combination with uh, the earth, uh, you know, and, and just getting that really uh, concentration of of, of the uh, tobacco uh, uh, aromas, excuse me, uh, coming through. It's just really, really, really wonderful. So, uh, I this uh, again, this cigar, I, I give it, a, I give it a box, uh, a box purchase. Uh, medium to full, uh, five by fifty is my favorite uh, in this Asylum Thirteen cigar. Awesome. And I know you. And I know you had it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had it. I mean, I've uh, in my experience, I've interviewed Tom Lazuka uh, with Cigar Club Radio. Uh, mm. I've not interviewed uh, Tom Tom here at Stogie Geeks. We've had Christian on a couple of times. Uh, yes, they're, Chris. as you know, they're, they're, they're very good friends and business partners, uh, yeah. there, uh, so geeks, if you, if you go in there and type in, uh, Christian Aroa interview or Christian Aroa, it's amazing how he talks about how the concept of asylum was, was made in 27 minutes, his words, mm -hmm. not mine, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, uh, Tom had come up with this, this concept in there and, and it, it, it blew up for him. So, um. Yeah, it's a good brand. Uh, a lot of shops did well when they first came out. Um, uh, here in the Northeast, they still do pretty well uh, there, but um, got to have people on the streets for sure, you know, oh, yeah. in order to, 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 to keep the flame alive. No pun intended. So, again, that wrapper is Habano wrapper, and the uh, binder and filler is uh, Nika. Um, but, yeah, I, you'll, you'll enjoy the cigar if you haven't had it, or if you haven't had it in a while, revisit the cigar. Mm -hmm. Um like I said, for me, I, I I do have it as a regular rotation in my in, in my humidor, and I do go to it quite a bit. So I go through my boxes pretty quickly. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And you gave it a box worthy. I gave it a box worthy. Yeah. Box I, worthy. I, 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 yeah, I buy them at box worthy. Yep. There you go. Before I talk about yep. next cigar, I want to take time out to talk to you about McAuliffe Cigars. They are looking for a brand ambassadors. They're bringing back the brand ambassador program. All you got to do is go to stogiegeeks.com. Click on the McAuliffe logo, fill in the information. You get some benefits. You get behind-the-scenes view of a boutique cigar company, 25% discount on all swag, exclusive contest for ambassadors. It's a great way to uh, enter into our uh, fascinating field. You get uh, some more cigars at specific McAuliffe events that you could put together as a brand ambassador. Facebook group membership and an ambassador coin. It all starts when you go to stogiegeeks.com, click on that McAuliffe Cigar logo, and away you go. Uh, sometime in Q3, I'm assuming it's October, 
not too sure. We're going to have the ambassadors and do a panel round discussion and talk about how yes. that project's going. And I think it's super important that um, they're bringing back the ambassador program, no question. Um, there you go. Now, my next cigar is a continuation from last week when I got an email from Calvin. Calvin said, I definitely need to try these warp cigars. I had trouble getting them in the Northeast. Therefore, uh, Drew had sent me cigars, which led to the barrage of emails and Facebook posts saying, don't forget about Drew's cigars. However, <laughs> uh, I reviewed last week the um, Warped Series Grand Reserver uh, 1988 Robusto. Uh, this week, I am reviewing, this is uh, Calvin's recommendation, the Warped Corto for, I'm sorry, the Warped Corto X46. Mm -hmm. uh, short little cigar. I think it's 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 it. These are real neat cigars, um, for sure. Uh, in regards to the uh, flavor of them, I mean they're full bodied. They're uh, the X forty six is four and a half by forty six inches. Uh, comes in boxes of twenty five. You have a Nicaraguan Criollo ninety nine wrapper. You have a Nicaraguan. Criollo 99 um, and Criollo 98 filler with some Nicaraguan binders in there. So it's straight packed Nicaraguan in a little four and a half by 46 stick. Makes a good dog walking stick. If you got, mm -hmm. if you got 30 minutes and you want to walk your dog and it's cold here in the Northeast and you need to go outside, you can do that. Um, there, they're little short sticks, good for travel, portable, awesome sticks. Um, get a little bit of leather towards the end. It's woody, has a little bit of uh, hints of caramel coming out, but uh, I, I had to re retrohale to actually uh, get those. Uh, price doesn't break the bank, so check them out. Um, that being said, I certainly would, would, would give them a box split for sure. Uh, that was the uh, Warped uh, Corto X46. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this cigar, I, along with me sending you those, I, I had the chance to, 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 to partake those as well. And I, I really love the, the way the floral and the cocoa really come together uh, at the beginning of the cigar for me on my palate. Uh, it does give you a, a good medium uh, uh, level when you do the retro for sure. Uh, and, the, and the ash, I mean, the ash is like, you know, it was, it was, you know for being that size cigar, like, like you said, a dog walker, but a 46. Uh, it it, def it definitely, the, the char line stayed true throughout the cigar. And I, which I know with some of these smaller ones, I, I tend to inhale a little faster or maybe more fuller than I do with a Robusto sized cigar. But this 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 cigar, I mean, it impressed me. So, yeah. Just, yeah. just my take on that. You, you uh, reviewed that a couple weeks ago, didn't you? Or, or that line, didn't you? Or no? No, I, I did that. Yeah, I did that line, but I didn't do the stick. I was leaving, leaving this for you because uh, of Calvin's email. Uh, but the smoke, again, I mean, you get that smoke that's full. It's very thick in body. Um, and uh, like I said, it, the, the the burn on it, just very nice. Not, not, a, not an issue with it. And that's something I'm, I've been paying attention to quite a bit lately is the burn on cigars because you'll definitely get some, you know, some uh, – <clears throat> Some sour, not sour, and it's just a, a bitter taste if you get an uneven burn because basically what you're smoking then it's just you know charred paper mm -hmm. or charred leaf, charred leaf. Excuse me. <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like them. I like them. You know. Yeah. They're, they're, oh, they're I love them. You know? Yeah. So Calvin, thank you for that for for guiding us down that trail because that that was pretty that was pretty nice uh, nice find. Yep. In, in the Cordo. Yep. Plus his hangout shop has beer in the in the in the low in the name. Do they smoking really? beer, yeah. I, I said it last week, but yeah, I was, nah. I was like, yeah, this sounds like you know my my place to hang out in PA when I nice. get down when I get a little west. You know, I always nice. fly in and out of PA, but other than that, <clears throat> that's about it. Drew, your next stick. My well, next stick is uh, Alec and Bra uh, Alec Bradley Fine and Rare uh, Hall of Fame five hundred six uh, six and a quarter by fifty four box pressed Grand Toro. Uh, so each year tends. Uh, Tens, especially aged and selected tobaccos, are chosen. Uh, 
the tobaccos are then rolled into a shape that represents the blend uh, the best. Uh, so this, you know, not knowing much about the the history of the cigar, um, I was uh, introduced to these cigars by a lounge member. Um, they gave me one just to have and try, and I really liked it. So I went back for a couple more uh, to get, to do the rating for it. Uh, 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 rappers Hond- Honduran Trejos, uh, Binder and Filter Honduras Nicaraguan. Uh, so for this cigar here, it it, it is uh, it, take your time with it. Uh, let the notes develop. Let the smoke develop. Let let it let it do its thing on its own time. And you're going to enjoy the the the, the sweet uh, aromas of cedar, uh, the taste notes of sweet maple. Uh, a lot uh, you get a lot of creaminess in the second uh, second third, and then the spice starts to kick in a little bit uh, uh, towards the end of that third, and then from there on on the finish you you get back into the to the cedar uh, that's there, not strong but just enough to 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 have your uh, your uh, your aromas uh, sensor just kind of go through that process and and just really circle the wagon um, on the cigar. Um, this cigar, I definitely, I, I I'd give it a fiver. Um, it's uh, they're not going to be available that much because I, I guess they're, uh, from what I understand, um, they're they're in limited quantity. Mm. So fiver for me on this one. Limited quantity until they sell, exactly. <laughs> and it's not the, it's not Alec Bradley. It's 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 across the board, All right? Awesome, yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. This next stick, are you gonna are you gonna go with the? Uh, I think it's Criollo ninety eight. No, 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 no. That that Creole ninety eight. That's something else. That's oh. just a leaf. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, that's that's something. All else. Right, I didn't uh, get it finished. Okay, cool. We're gonna yeah, eighty six yeah, yeah. that on the site. So you have yeah, the yeah. the Gurkha. Ghost Phantom Gordo, five by fifty-eight. Okay, so Kirka. Okay, so oh, let's see. I, I probably smoked. Everybody, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody, <laughs> I love it. I, I, I love talking about Kirka on Stogie Geeks because oh, everybody man. goes <sighs> before they talk about Kirka, and 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 it's for all different reasons. I'm conflicted because you know <laughs> that's some of the similar the- reasons. So, you know, I'm conflicted because, you know, they, they've really put a lot of work in the marketing. They really put a lot of work in the band, you know, as far as the artwork and the fonts and all that stuff and, and the cigar, you know, the way it's packaged and the way it's presented. I mean, it looks nice. It looks great, you know. And then you start to peel back, like, you know, the makeup of the cigar and it just kind of like, oh, OK, this is going to be interesting. Um so you know the Gurkha Ghost Phantom Gordo five by fifty eight. It's a full to medium cigar. Uh, the uh, the blend starts with a dark alluring a Brazilian. Uh, I can't say this word. A replica, replica wrapper. Uh, it is a very. Uh, uh, I don't want to say girthy either, but I just said it. It's a girthy cigar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the leaf is uh, the leaf is draped over a well aged uh, Criollo ninety eight binder, which which then. Uh, then you get the uh, the filler of Dominican uh, and Nicaraguan long fillers. So, you know, this cigar just left me kind of, you know, I, I, I went through my process of smelling the cigar, looking at the cigar, looking at the cap, looking at the foot. And then I start to go ahead and get into the burn phase of this uh, and then take some draws. And, you know, it was just like, I, I guess just reading the contents of what this cigar is, it, 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 it kind of left me a little blank. I mean, it, it took me basically half of the first third, which was, I'm going to say, a good 10 minutes, 12 minutes to really hone in on something. And then finally, the first thing that kicked in was the sweet spice that was there uh, from the Brazilian rapper, for sure. And then it got into the the nutty, toasty, nutty flavors, and then cocoa, and then and then into the, into the oak uh, in the second third. But yeah, it just kind of left me, you know, left me wondering, you know, maybe it was I smoking it too fast? Was I expecting more out of it just because of the, the way it's packaged? Was it, was it all the, you know, the allure of looking at the cigar? I mean, it's 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 pretty and all, but it just didn't it, it didn't really resonate with you. Yeah, it just didn't really kick in, you know, kick in on me until at the end where I was like, thank God that's over with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I'm boy. so sorry. No, no don't I'm please, so don't, dude. Oh, don't, don't. Yeah. You're, you're, pff, yeah, I mean, I want... you know, one, one of the problems that I have with Gurkha is 
they make, and I'm making the number up, 42 different blends. Yes. And like six of them are like super awesome. I don't want to say rare, but like the the process they use, there's a little bit more delicate attention to 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 some of the rest of the line. Let's just say, and yeah. they have lower price sticks, and then they have higher price sticks, and yeah. then they have the in between, right? And and as a consumer, we got to go through forty two lines, and by the time we like something, the second time. We forget what we liked the first time, and then we kind of like try to rekindle. And then we have a couple more, and then it gets all crisscross, and then it gets jumbled in the consumer's head. It's lost. Yeah, it's it lost, lost. You know what I mean? And it's like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I mean, we, we've interviewed Gurkha here. I, that, that's how I started the question with, with, with the interview. We interviewed, I believe it was Vice President of Marketing off the top of my head. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Right, and I'm just like you know, help help us sift through the, yeah. these lines of cigars. And he gave us a couple of lines, and I tried them, and I don't know, man. But they do well, like like outside of the United States, alluding to what I spoke about last week when I was talking about the PCA. Contrary yeah. to other people's beliefs, that I absolutely positively don't belong talking about the PCA because I Correct. haven't because I haven't attended a show. Number one. Okay, I haven't never attended an IPCPR, and I've never attended a well. No one's ever attended a PCA. It's the first year that they came up yeah. with that cockamamie idea. Okay, and number two, uh, what was the two? What was the second one? I'm having a brain fart because I'm getting aggravated. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. I remember. I, I'm I'm supposed to I'm supposed to donate money to an yeah. organization to have a media partner. Well, right. l- let me tell you how business works, okay? And let me tell you more specifically how business works here on Stogie Geeks, okay? Um, if we have an open mic policy for anyone that wants to come here on Stogie Geeks, okay? Yep. I am not reaching out for, for interviews uh, unless you're Davidoff because I completely think that that company does everything right and has nothing to do with PCA in their stance, okay? I am a fan of Davidoff's, okay? We all know from listening to the shows, my favorite cigar is the rare Tatuaje Pork Tenderloin. And we all know Mm -hmm. that I can't get to a Story Geek show without using the word Tatuaje or Viaje in a sentence, so therefore I now continue the tradition and I say it. However, you lost me. You lost me at pork tenderloin. I'm sorry. <laughs> move, move forward. Right, right. Well, I cannot move <laughs> forward once I talk about pork tenderloins, right? <laughs> I cannot move forward. You know, I stare at them every day. They're right oh, there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and you know, um, and it, it, it's amazing how, you know, it's like comments go through, people go comments, and my email box blew up. You know, so and so mentioned something on their Facebook about Stogie Geeks, and it goes here, and I'm just like, dude, I am not, I am not in high school, I am not playing caddy, okay? If anybody wants to talk to me about industry and your business, you can email Drew at StogieGeeks.com, Joe at StogieGeeks.com, or if you do not like me, you email Paul at StogieGeeks.com, okay? And then we'll take the business accordingly from there. However, okay. I am not going to let those two comments go, okay? I truly form, firmly stand behind everything I said in episode 318 of Stogie Geeks, okay? Media shouldn't be a PCA or IPCPR. We don't need to be there, okay? We do this 365 days a year conceptually, right? We do a right. cadence of shows weekly, some of us biweekly, some quarterly, whichever, okay? And most of us have open microphones, let's face it. Okay, and so why would I learn about the new sticks when my email is blowing up on the press releases anyway? When they email all of that stuff, I mean, we get press releases three, four, five, ten, fifteen a week sometimes, yep. right? And then when I, yeah. it's funny because when I email them back, hey, how about an interview? Or hey, what about there? Oh, okay, we'll check, you know, and they'll go forward there. And then you know, oh, I want an interview with Paul. Why don't you want an interview with Joe? You don't want to talk about your business? How would you not want to talk about your business? So. That's my yeah. stance, okay? Number one, I don't need to buy a media pass, okay? Number two, another comment came through, okay, saying that 
I outright lied on Stogie Geeks, but I outright lied on my cigar podcast. Didn't even use the word Stogie Geeks, but happened mm. four minutes after Stogie Geeks launched live. So you know we're we're all not we're all not uh, you know dumb here, right? Uh, even right. though a lot of people in this industry like to play dumb, okay? Um, you know, uh, it, an employee told me I could film at Stogie Geeks. Now whether that employee was new to the organization at that time, and if I recall, it was three weeks into his career when I was told that I could go there and do that. And then, and then it's like, well, that's not how media works. What, I got to pay my, my fee to talk for something that they can come down? It's ridiculous. So this is my invitation to all Cigar Podcasts, okay? If you have a question for me, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. I can email you. Or put me on your show. Put me on your show and put me in my place. Put me in my place if I don't belong there. And let's have a constructive argument about the industry and about the industry moving forward. Or are we all going to get our panties in a bunch over one show? I'm done. Right. Do you have any more sticks, Drew? I do not. The Gurkha stick, like I said, I, I would say give it a try one. <laughs> if, you know, and I'm not, you know, like I said, Gurkha does have, uh, they do have some good offerings. Uh, it's just that you got to wade through them. And like I said, you know, and, and the gentleman who gave me this one, by all means, I mean, he, you know, he, he kind of told, he kind of told me afterwards, he goes, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. So, uh, but yeah, just uh, definitely give it a try one. Uh, I, I won't be so mean and say it's an angler. Um, but but I did think about that for a second. Mm-hmm. So uh, so yeah, give it a try one and uh, go from there. Yeah, we uh, we, we got to get your Gurkha back on the show, and yeah. and 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 I really want them to uh, compile a list, and I'm making the number up six, seven, eight sticks there because it's like well, this, you know yeah, well, well, there are good ones, the, but what are yeah. they? What what are well, they? It's a mystery. Well, this. Yeah, well, this is the opposite of our last uh, of our interview we just had. You know, the opposite of it, where you know they're really, really searching out their sticks carefully, or their 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 tobaccos carefully, um, putting it out. And I'm just I'm just thinking it's marketing more than anything. Um, but yeah, if they would, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I don't want to be talking out of my ass, but hey, no, other people. <laughs> we, we're gonna get accused of it anyway, so we might as well. So, so you know, you, you might as well, right? I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I back it up with 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 facts and figures. Facts, exactly. Uh, there, but you know, no. In in, in regards to 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 to, to Gurkha, let's look at them outside of the United States. It kind of alludes to last week's episode, right? Sure. They do sure. very well. I have family in Spain, so I can say this across the pond. Right, uh-huh. they call the Atlantic Ocean the pond. Right, you know it's on the right. other side of the pond. Right, so they do very well across the pond. They do very yeah. well. It, they're, they're 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 probably top seven or eight for sure over there in volume and doing that there. So so they are doing something right. And the consumers, you know, I, I think we're a little bit more attached to the culture with our social media and and and, and there. We certainly yeah. are as as host of stogie geeks for sure but it's like you know i don't know it, it's uh i i i want to find one that i'm like this is, gets a high rating but again i personally this is my personal comment i just get lost in the shuffle that's all i just get lost in the yeah. shuffle of, of of what they have to offer and by the time i get pick one and remember it um it, it's it, I, I i i get lost in that shuffle yeah and i you know now I, going forward i'm, I'm definitely gonna do some uh, prodding into their other uh, uh, facings mm-hmm. and, and and figure out well, you know which is which for me because I mean I'm pretty sure they do they do make a wonderful stick I mean that's it's just that this stick for me it just did not did not really show up um, the way I read it to show up it's like looking at it when I go to a restaurant my wife and I go to restaurants quite a bit and you look at something on the menu you read about it and the eyes you know and the mind just take you into a whole different area than the expectation when the when the uh when the plate arrives it's totally different it's like wait a minute 
Where's the ancho? transition, where, Drew. Excellent. Where, where, where's the ancho chili? You know, where's the, you know, where I don't taste the green chili. Where is that? You know, it says it's green chili. So yeah, yeah, anyhow. yeah. So yeah, anyway. Anyways. Yeah. But yeah, I, no, I, but I definitely will keep going through uh, Gurkha's line and, and find it. And, and any listeners out there, if you have anything that to add to that, please email me, Drew at StogieGeeks.com. Let me know. I mean, help me out here because that's a lot of sticks yeah. to wade through. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I was going to go there too. Last week. Yeah. I ended the show saying that I bought a box unsight unseen. Mm. HVCs are blowing up here in the Northeast. But these little tasty suckers are available in a box of 50. Never smoked it before. I bought a box. Had the first one. These are awesome. These Black Friday 2019 uh, little shorts, or little short Robustos. Come in a box of 50. So it is pricey. I will have my full review. Uh... Next week, for sure, on this, but um, I very rarely do boxes uh, on sight unseen. Mm. You know what I mean? And I was very happy that I did uh, there. I'm going as far as predicting that this stick's going to be a player in 2020. So January 24th, 2020, Hosemp is picking. This stick's going to be a player in that crazy panel that we call Sticks of the Year. Nice. What do you think, Drew? That's an episode. Oh, yeah. 319. That's an episode for sure. Remember, Stogie <laughs> Geeks, we keep the conversation go all, going all week long. Hit us up on Facebook.com forward slash Stogie Geeks. StogieGeeks.com. Make sure you click on that Placencia banner. Check out a retailer near you. If you have any email that you want to send, Drew at StogieGeeks.com. He's readily available. I want to remind you that behind every cigar there's a story worth knowing. Get out to your brick and mortar and shop local. Oh, Support yeah. your local business. I want to give a special thank you to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, Placencia Cigars, and McAuliffe Cigars, and Nessa Placencia for showing up on Story Geeks, episode 319. We'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>